Our reading for today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Deject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Hear the word of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. One Thessalonians five verse sixteen. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, also known as Godet Sunday, Godet, the Latin word for rejoice. And so it's the Sunday of joy in our Advent journey. It's a Sunday where the Advent mood takes a turn. We turn from what was a very reflective and penitent state of reflecting on hope, to a more joyful space of anticipating this gift of hope. We mark the shift liturgically by moving from purple or blue to traditionally the color pink. And so as we do so, we move from lighting the purple candles to lighting the one pink candle as a clear illustration to each of us that we are now taking a different route, a visible shift to challenge us to recognize that amidst the darkness of the world, through waiting, through watching, through working, through enduring a culture of faith, the gift of joy is present. This Pink Sunday, Godet Sunday, Sunday of Joy, is also traditionally a Sunday in many homes when the Christmas tree goes up and the Christmas cleaning begins. Homes start to smell a bit like paint. Curtains get pulled down and thrown in the washing machine. We check the freezer to see if the gammon is enough and we start ordering our fresh cream For the trifle. I'm trying to see where the smiles are, but you're hiding behind your masks. I won't know who makes the best gammon in St. Saviour's. But this week is traditionally a time when instructions are given as to how Christmas traditions come alive. The Christmas carols start playing. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. Paul, when he writes to the Thessalonians, he offers them this simple instruction, reminding them that amidst the trials and tribulations they face of the day, there are really just three things they ought to do. They ought to rejoice, to pray, 
and to give thanks. Those are the three things Paul believes is fundamental to seeing through this time of difficulty. And so when I was preparing for this morning and reflecting on these instructions offered by Paul, there was this strange verse that kept coming to my mind. Psalm 137 verse 4. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? For you see, for so many of us, my sisters and brothers, we feel as if we are in a strange land at the moment. The world has evolved and moved at such a rapid pace that in trying to keep up with it, we have lost so much of the familiarity and what we believed was the normal. It feels as if we have entered a strange land. As a country, our democracy and our freedom has failed to produce the promises made to us in the build-up to liberation. As a city, we have failed at building an inclusive space for both rich and poor, white and black. As families in our homes, we have failed to hold fast to the many values handed down from one generation to the next. As a church, we have failed at so many things, particularly in our role as carers of the vulnerable and especially caring for women and children in our community. And so, yes, it does feel as if we are in a strange land. And yet today, through Paul's writing to the Thessalonians, we are called to rejoice, to sing the Lord's song. We are called to ignite the gift of hope. But yet so many of us sit here today and we say to ourselves, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How are we expected to be joyful when so many terrible things are happening around us? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances. As a people of faith, this Advent, we stand on the brink of something new. We stand on the brink of the Word of God breaking through into our world as a God of new beginnings. As the psalmist reminds us, darkness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Advent is the dawning of a new day for each one of us. The sun is about to rise. The darkness is fading. The light of Jesus Christ is breaking through your and my darkness. Joy is coming in the morning. The night has passed away. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances. As a people, we are now challenged to live out this joy. We are called today as we leave church to leave this place being reignited and re-energized with the gift of hope. We are called to go into God's world and share the gift of joy with all of God's people, 
no matter who or what they are. But we can only share what we have. And so today I want to remind you, my friends, that you do have joy. Where, you might ask, in such a miserable world, how can we have joy? Again, let me take you back to your Sunday school days. For some of us, as I say, it's a bit longer uh, than others, so I'll give you some time to go back for those who need time to go back to your Sunday school days. And remember that chorus that is sung, I've got joy, 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 deep in my heart. That is where your and my joy lies. It lies deep in our hearts. Today we are reminded to recognize that behind all that hurt and anger we carry in our hearts, behind all that family drama and work stress we harbor in our hearts, behind all the church gossip and relationship struggles which occupy our hearts, underneath all of that lies the gift of joy. The gift of joy is present in your and my life. Today we are called to rediscover that gift of joy by grabbing hold of St. Paul's words. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances. Friends, as we allow ourselves to be readied for Christmas, let us not get caught up and be sad about Christmas being different this year. Yes, our lunch tables will be smaller. Some will be missing from the lunch table. The celebrations will be a lot different. The party will end earlier because of curfew. The Mibos won't be as tasty as it usually is with that beverage of choice. The whiskey won't taste the same without that friend enjoying it with us. And so yes, it will indeed be different. But I want to encourage each one of us that today as we sit here, let us choose to grab hold of the Advent message, the message of hope, the message that joy will come in the morning, the message that darkness cannot endure forever. The message that amidst all of this, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Whatever we do, let us rejoice always. Let us pray without ceasing. And let us give thanks in all circumstances for being ready and prepared for the birth of Jesus Christ, the breaking through of God and the word of God afresh into each of our lives. That is the gift of joy. The gift of being ready to welcome a Jesus who comes into this world, who comes into a dark and broken world and offers us hope. A Jesus who breaks down the evils of greed, jealousy, lust, corruption, and violence. The Word made flesh, who we today invite to come and build a land more familiar, so that when we are called to sing God's song, it doesn't feel as if we are in a strange land. And so, my sisters and brothers, as we partake in the building of a promised land, we are called to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, 
and to give thanks in all circumstances. For amidst the darkness we face, amidst feeling like we cannot sing the Lord's song in a strange land, let us not lose hope. Because our God lives. And because God lives, we can face tomorrow. Because God lives, we can face tomorrow. And so I invite you today to prayerfully bring that before God and allow yourself to no longer feel like a stranger in a strange land, but to know that God is with you. We never walk this journey alone. God always walks with us. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.